I invite you now to join me in prayer. May we pray. You have drawn us together this day, God, after so many months of isolation and sequestering. We know that through our time away from our sanctuary, we have continued to worship you and follow in your footsteps through the gifts of technology. No matter where we are, you have provided a way for us to reach out and be in worship during this pandemic. You have shown us that people from a variety of backgrounds, experiences, hopes, and dreams can connect and worship with one another via social media. So God, we ask that you be with us as together we experience your presence and your healing love. Open our hearts and our spirits to receive strength, encouragement, and peace. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a candle, I invite you to light a candle at this time to continue centering yourselves in our worship today. And if you recall, every time I light a candle, I say these words, light of Christ, shine on our path, chase away all darkness, and lead us to the heart of God. Amen. So now I'd like to share with you two scripture readings. The first one comes from the book of Psalms, from the 67th Psalm, and the second one is a gospel reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Here from Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the people with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere God. And now hear the gospel reading from the Gospel of Matthew, from the 15th chapter, verses 21 through 28. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away. She keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, we are so grateful for this time together today. Please open our hearts and minds as we listen to your message. Through your humble servant, we pray. Amen. So I'd like to share a story first from Ministry Matters that tells the story of the Canaanite woman in a slightly different way. They called me a food, fool, for pestering Jesus. I didn't know what else to do. 
All the healers, all the prayers, all the incantations over my daughter did nothing. I was going to lose her. Her torments seemed to be getting stronger with each moment. I feared for her life. I love her so much. I needed help. And then Jesus came to town. I knew of the wonders that he had performed, where he gets around, and I wondered if he might be able to help me. I'm not an Israelite. I'm a foreigner in this land. My faith background is not the Israelite faith, and they said that I shouldn't even be there. Who did I think I was? <clears throat> they kept shouting at me. Get away from Jesus, they said. You don't belong here. You are not one of us. I didn't listen to them, or at least didn't follow what they wanted. I came to Jesus and tugged on his robes, pleading for my daughter's restoration. And he looked at me. Even his disciples said that I should be sent away. Please, please, Lord, heal my daughter. He looked at the crowds and said that he was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. I didn't care. I took a risk. Please help us, Lord. He said that the bread was for the chosen people, for the children of God. It was not fair to take their bread and throw it to the dogs. I couldn't believe it. A dog? I was a dog? So I summed up all my courage, and I told him that even the dogs get the crumbs that are dropped under the table. I wasn't asking for the whole thing, just some healing for one little girl. That's all. With compassion in his eyes, he looked at me and said, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. Amazed, shocked, I felt as though I was floating. Let it be done for me as I wish? My daughter would be healed? Oh my God, it's true. She is healed. She's well. She's whole. And so am I. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for having compassion on me, a foreigner in need. Thank you. Thank you. Last week, we heard about Jesus quieting the stormy sea, where we heard the word quiet or peace be still. And if you look behind me, you'll see a beautiful lake. And I hope that gives you that sense of calmness, that sense of releasing all your stress and anxiety in our lives. And if you recall too, Jesus asked the disciples and now us as to why we don't trust him and have faith when we do get stressed and when we do have anxiety. But today I want to ask you a question. What kind of faith do you have, and how do you see God? That is our question for the text today from our Gospel reading to help us answer. For what we see in our text today is about an outsider who has a persevering faith. And we also discover that God is merciful, even if at first we don't understand what God is doing. So let's set the stage. The story begins with Jesus going up to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Tyre and Sidon are cities outside the boundaries of Israel. They're up north along the coast. This is Gentile territory that Jesus is now entering. He had just recently finished feeding the 5,000, and he had also warned the people as to what they say, because he said that it's not what goes into people's mouths that defiles somebody, it's what comes out. And we know that people can say hurtful and harmful things to others. So now he needs some time after feeding the 5,000 and after talking to people, he needs some time to go off to pray. So he goes someplace where he thinks that nobody will know him. He goes to Tyre and Sidon. And there the people who lived were not Jews and they didn't follow the religion of Israel. They were indeed Gentiles. So here Jesus is with his disciples in a foreign region outside of their physical comfort zones. And there's a woman who comes after them pleading for help. <clears throat> Not a Jew, but a Gentile. She's a Canaanite woman, also sometimes called a Syrophoenician woman from the Gospel of Mark. And not being a man, a woman, an outsider, actually comes and speaks to Jesus. This was certainly a shock and quite a surprise. <clears throat> but here it is. Here's this woman who comes to Jesus crying out, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. She is somebody who must have heard what Jesus had been doing elsewhere about his healings, his miracles, and his acts of mercy, which encouraged her now to come forward with her request. And the surprising thing is when she first asked Jesus to help her, he's silent. He didn't answer her at all. 
not even one word. That can be really surprising. Why wouldn't Jesus answer her? We wonder what's going on here. Is Jesus being cold-hearted by not responding to her? How would we explain his silence? And have you ever prayed in the past and, and felt that God was silent to you? That God didn't answer your prayers? Sometimes, too, when we pray, we don't always get the answer that we're looking for. And we may wonder did, that God doesn't hear our prayers because we're met with silence. That sometimes seems like a mystery to us, but we know that God does move in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. And I think, do we think that God is silent and is cold-hearted, or is it because we just don't understand God's ways? Maybe it's our inability to see what God is doing in our lives. Maybe it's because God has a better plan in store than the one we have in mind. So at first the Canaanite woman is met with silence. He did not answer her a word. Maybe there's also something too that Jesus wants to teach his disciples because you, the disciples you saw wanted to send her away. They didn't understand what Jesus was doing. So they say, send her away, for she is crying out after us. They're basically saying, get lost. A lousy Gentile like you doesn't deserve help. At first it seems that maybe Jesus might be going along with this. And we certainly hope not, because we've all learned that Jesus is for everyone. And Jesus, you know, would reach out to us with love and compassion and healing. So it's a little bit disturbing when we hear this, this, this passage. And especially, too, when Jesus says to her, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the lost sheep of Israel that needed to be gathered in. These are the people, the Jews, that Jesus first said that he was sent to help. And she, a Gentile, is outside of that faith. But she sees something different. In spite of this seeming rebuff, the Canaanite woman, she persists. She perseveres. She kneels before Jesus and says, Lord, help me. But then she encounters another obstacle that is placed in her way because Jesus replies it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs that's basically to say it's not right to take the blessings promised to the children of Israel and give them to the Gentiles you see sometimes the Gentiles were referred to as dogs as was a term of disrespect and derogatory in insult but we're not talking about the cute little dogs that <coughs> other people what we think that are in our houses most people when they said that they said that the dogs they were using as a derogatory term something that for the wild dogs but Jesus because in the Greek there are two words for the word dog Jesus actually uses the Greek word like little doggies for the dogs that are in the houses so he's referring to those that are loved and cared for in in people's houses so Jesus is actually using a kind and inviting word, not a derogatory word for dogs. And the woman, she picks up on it. She says, yes, Lord, but even the dogs get to eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. So the woman came, not claiming anything as her right, but simply throwing herself on the Lord's mercy. She was willing to be compared to a dog that eats scraps off the table. <clears throat> This Canaanite woman did not give up when obstacles were placed in her way. She definitely had a persevering faith. She wasn't deterred. Think of the obstacles that she fought through, but she did so because she believed in Jesus and his ability to heal others. She trusted in Jesus, even though she was a Canaanite woman, a Gentile. She wasn't deterred when Jesus was silent, when he didn't answer her a word. She wasn't discouraged either by the comment of the disciples, who said, send her away. And she wasn't discouraged either when Jesus talked about being sent to only the lost sheep of Israel. This woman simply did not give up. She loved her daughter. Like any parent would, she would do anything to save her daughter. She's also trying to tell Jesus, she said, surely there's enough to go around. Surely that there's enough faith for all of us to overcome any obstacle if we just go ahead and seek out God and that God is for everyone. So this scripture shows us that God wants us to have the same kind of faith, a persevering faith in a merciful Lord. God wants us to reach out to Jesus 
in spite of any obstacles we may face. I know sometimes it's so easy to give up. People do it all the time. When there is suffering in their lives, they give up and they think that God doesn't care. When something goes wrong in their life, they give up and they stop coming to Jesus. When something doesn't go the way that they like, they give up and they give up on God and sometimes they even stop coming to church. But God doesn't want us to give up. God wants us to persevere in faith like the Canaanite woman did and to seek and find his mercy. The Canaanite did not give up and Jesus commends her for her faith. He says, O oh woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. He grants her request and her daughter is healed. My friends, this is the merciful Lord in whom we are trusting. And today God is strengthening you in your faith. God is building in you a faith that perseveres. The Canaanite woman believed and trusted in Jesus, even though she was considered an outsider of a different flock. She confronted all the obstacles placed before her and she still sought out Jesus and showed him that God's love and mercy could extend far beyond the Jews. This was the beginning of Jesus and the disciples understanding that his ministry was to extend to all, far beyond the people of Israel. And as we know, later on, when Jesus commissioned this, the disciples, he said, go to all the corners of the world, reach out, baptizing them in the name of the God. And he sent them to send the good news to all people throughout the world. Aren't we blessed because we know that God is for all of us too. So may we continue to seek out Jesus, no matter what obstacles we face, no matter what it is that we have to encounter, even during this pandemic, let us put our faith and trust in Jesus and let us be blessed because you are and we are a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. friends, I am so glad that you are able to join us in worship today. We come now to this time where we give thanks to God for all the blessings that God has given us. So I invite you to send in your pledges via mail or electronically. Please know that we are here for you. If you are from another church, please continue to support the ministries of your own churches. However, if you are still looking for a church, we can be here. Just contact us and we will be more than happy to welcome you into our fold. At this time, I invite you to listen to this song, Freely, Freely. And now, may we pray a prayer as we give thanks to God. Most gracious and loving God, we love you and we thank you for all those blessings that you've given us. So please accept these offerings now to be put to your work and to your ministries. Help us to continue to follow in your footsteps 
in all that we do and say. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We come now to a time of lifting people up in prayer, of those that are on our prayer list and, and those that we just have that are weighing our hearts and minds. So let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, you have watched over us each and every moment of our lives. And even though sometimes we feel so far from you, you are never far from us. So God, we ask that you watch over us and, and help us, keep us encouraged. Don't let us be discouraged by whatever's going on in this world. Help us to continue to be your hands and feet in this world. Help us to continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. God, we need your help. We need your encouragement. We need your healing in a world that seems so broken. So God, we ask that you watch over all those that are on our prayer list, all those that are weighing on our hearts and minds that we lift up to you this day. We also lift up all the essential personnel, all the medical and emergency personnel, and all those who continue to work so that we may have food and groceries, that we may have whatever needs to help us to continue to live through this pandemic. God, we are so grateful because you love us, you forgive us, even through all of our flaws, through all of our mistakes, and even when we are not as kind as we should be to others, you still show us your mercy. May we never lose sight of that. May we always seek you out. And may we always remember the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we get ready to go forth, I pray that you will continue to persevere in whatever it is that you may be facing, and continue to seek out God. Remember that Jesus' love and compassion has been poured out for you today and every day. May you be like Christ, bearing forgiveness and love for all of God's people. May you go in peace. May you sense the quietness and be still. May you sense God's presence always in your lives. And may you share the good news with others. And all God's people said, Amen. <laughs>